Good to be chatting here on Flow FM with the CEO of Grain Producers SA, Brad Perry. How's it going, Brad? Yeah, good. Thanks, Ricky. I guess a little bit of tough news in a sense. You've visited farmers out on the Air Peninsula that were affected by storms earlier in the year, but hopefully there's a bit of positive turnaround for them. Yeah, I think when uh, when I travelled up with the GPSA chair, Adrian McCabe, to the areas of the Air Peninsula in, in January that got hit by um, you know hit by some storms, uh, you know it was pretty uh, pretty sort of devastating for some who had had a lot of erosion and and a work um, that re- was required on their property, but the immediate attention was was cropping um, and and getting uh, getting seed into the ground so. Um, I think they were focusing on on doing that, and we thought um, we'll come back after seeding and um, have a chat to some of the areas and the and the farmers that were impacted. Yeah, well, I guess at the end of the day, you got to get done what needs to be done at a time like that. But now the dust has settled, so to speak. Uh, what is what's the feeling there now from the farmers? What are their main needs now? Yeah, so we got um, we got a, a little bit of money from the state government to put on a, a couple of uh, bus tours. So uh, the ag bureaus at uh, Buckleboo and the Tucky Ag Bureau uh, over two days got some uh, some farmers together. I think they were really good numbers that jumped in a in a bus and and some uh, went and toured around some of the areas. So it was uh, you know it was it was good to see um, so many farmers get involved. There's definitely a good sense of optimism. So the rains left um, good soil moisture and, and crops are germinating. So, I mean, I think that's that's really positive. Um, but there are still issues with um, with water lying around and, and some er- soil erosion and, and other things as well. So um, there's something that we'll have to look at uh, a bit further. And, and it's one of those things we just need to keep um, keep supporting those uh, those growers impacted. That's great. Now, when it comes to rain, sometimes that's one of many factors that can do some damage to local roads. You're putting the spotlight from a Grain Producers SA point of view on, I guess, the roads that are significantly affected in regional SA. You want people to nominate. What is their worst road? So today we've launched the Worst Grain Road campaign. Um, We're looking for grain growers uh, and anyone really in the grain supply chain and even um, those community members that live in cropping regions to jump on to www.worstgrainroadsa.com.au and nominate a road that they think needs some attention. Uh, it's really about, uh, we know that there's a, a big regional road maintenance backlog. This is about where do we, as, as the uh, peak body for grain in South Australia, focus our efforts on talking to government. So what are the, you know, the, the main roads um, that we should be looking at um, for not only safety reasons, but also um, for productivity reasons? Yeah, I guess uh, it's similar to uh, that sort of campaign of well, more so what happens in bureaucracy of identifying key roads or strategic roads. But I guess you're doing this campaign because you're trying to identify well, what matters to a local community rather than what ticks bureaucratic boxes to get a project fixed. Yeah, I think it's it's just focused specifically on the, on the grain industry. So roads that the grain industry uses, whether that's, you know, truck for freight, for silo to port, um, you know, moving machinery, even just workers in, you know, in utes going to farms. Um, I guess we want to know which are the roads that are in uh, need of urgent repair or upgrade so we can focus our efforts on those um, at the end of it. So we'll leave it open until the end of September. And then at the end of it, um, based on, on people's votes, we uh, will come out of it with probably a top 10 list. And that top 10 list, I gather, then you'll take to what state and federal governments and say these are what our your supporters are telling us really need fixing and hopefully get some grants heading in that direction. Oh, exactly, Ricky. I think that's, that's what we'll do. So we just really want to focus on those roads. It's, it's state, federal and local government that um, manage the road network across the state. So um, I think it'll be really useful for, for the uh, governments at all levels too to, to know, you know, these are the roads that industry are saying um, really need to be looked at. And, and hopefully if they're down a list a little bit, hopefully this campaign can move them further up the top. Well, and I imagine too, no council is going to want to have the uh, reputation of having the worst road voted by grain producers in the community. They want to move and fix it pretty quickly. Yeah, I think that's spot on. And hopefully that's that's what we want to see from the, the campaign. So um, it really is uh, an internal um, process for us to understand exactly what, what grain producers and those in the supply chain are saying about um, particular roads. And, um, yeah, I've already had a lot of feedback so far on, on social media and through the website. So it's uh, 
Scott's got off to a flying start. Give us that web address again, then we'll talk about black spots. If they want to vote for their worst road, where do they go? www.worstgrainroadsa.com.au Okay, now we've just been talking about people in politics and getting things done. There was a lot of discussion during state and federal campaigns about mobile coverage, but you guys have, I guess, taken some initiative and some innovation to try and find a way to help in the meantime. Yeah, we applied for a grant um, through Agri Futures Australia, which we were successful for. So we teamed up with um, with Zetify, who are a, sort of an ag tech connectivity business, and, and they've got technology um, that really you can install on the back of a tractor or ute and get connectivity from there, I think, in the in the house as well. So it really is for us about um, undertaking a pilot. With three, we'll have three grain producers in really bad um, black spots across the state. We want to trial this, and it's really just showing that there are a number of different options to try and solve the connectivity divide. Which is important, I think, when it comes to, I guess, mobile coverage. And sometimes a tower or putting a new tower up is cost prohibitive for reasons that we might not appreciate. But uh, sometimes there are other solutions that can boost your coverage on your own vehicle. Yeah, I think it's you know it's a challenge because tower infrastructure is notoriously expensive. Um, you know, and, and the process that you need to go through to get a tower uh, in your region can be quite quite long as well, working with state and, and federal government and local government and RDAs, and the list goes on councils, um, which I mentioned. So I think, um, you know, if there are other options that, that farmers can use, I mean, um, the other problem is, too, that you've got areas with just Telstra or Optus, and, and you know, they don't uh, often, often talk to each other, so... Um, you know, there was an example of an Air Peninsula grower that I talked to um, the other day who said, you know, uh, they will drive up a hill to get connectivity, but outside of that, they drop out fully and they're trying to make business decisions um, which require uh, data and information and, and they don't have that at their fingertips and it makes it very hard for them. Um, another one said that they sort of get patchy Telstra in some areas of their property and uh, Optus and others and there's black spots in the middle so that was up in the mid north so you know there's all sorts of issues and, and really we just want to show that there are um, there are other uh, technology options out there I mean this isn't the silver bullet and there's lots of different um, connectivity technology um, but we just want to start showcasing to grain producers what is out there um, and, in, and in many ways de-risk um, that investment for them yeah, and it's an important one because we broadcast all over regional Australia and uh, it's a common topic everywhere we are is this mobile connectivity issue is a big bugbear for farmers when they've got to get so much more work uh, done on farm and often even in their machinery. I think arguably it's the biggest barrier to the um, uptake uh, and adoption of technology on farm as well. So um, it really is a, a massive barrier. If you don't have reliable connectivity on your farm, things like um, you know precision ag, data analytics, even just the basic, uh, you know, phone app that you might be recording data on, uh, you, they just don't work properly. They're not reliable. Makes it very hard to do business as a grain producer. Absolutely. Hey, uh, just we've both got a conflict of interest in a sense here about this next one, just to mention the Growing SA Conference. You're very involved in organising it, and I'm the MC for the event. But we should just mention, for those wanting to hear a lot more about what's happening in agriculture, this Growing SA Conference is fast approaching. Yeah, after some delays due to COVID, uh, yeah, we're really excited about having the Growing SA conference in person. So we're hoping that uh, the COVID doesn't rear its uh, ugly head again um, with the recent spikes. But we're also very excited to have you, Ricky, emceeing. Um, and we've got a big lineup of, uh, of, of guests in the grain and, and livestock space. So, um, yeah, we're really excited about getting everyone together again. You know, it's not only about hearing from experts in the field and, and some excellent panel sessions. But, you know, it really is the, the networking. That's uh, really key in, in agriculture. Yeah, and those dates for the conference, the 29th and 30th of August, and I think it might even coincide with an annual general meeting for Grain Producers SA as well. Is that right? Yeah, we've got our uh, annual general meeting on, on the 29th. So um, as do livestock like SA. So, yeah, we, we'd love to have see as many grain producers there as well to come and recap on uh, on the past year. All right. Well, we'll look forward to that as well and seeing you there and all of our listeners as well. Thanks very much, Brad, for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Ricky.